May it please your highness, my lord Archon of Oceana. If I did not, to my capacity, know from how profound a consular I dissent, it would certainly be no hard task to make it as light as the day. First, that an agrarian is altogether unnecessary. Secondly, that it is dangerous unto a commonwealth. Thirdly, that it is insufficient to keep out monarchy. Fourthly, that it destroys families. Fifthly, that it destroys industry. And last of all, that though it were indeed of any good use, it, would, it will be a matter of such difficulty to introduce in this nation, and so to settle that it may be lasting as is altogether invincible. First, that an agrarian is unnecessary unto a commonwealth. What clearer testimony can there be than that the commonwealths which are our contemporaries, Venice whereunto your highness giveth the upper hand of all antiquity being one, have no such thing? And there can be no reason why they have it now, seeing it is in the sovereign power at any time to establish such an order, but that they need it not. Wherefore, no wonder if Aristotle, who pretends to be a good and a good commonwealthman, have long since derided Phaleas, to whom it was attributed by the Greeks for this invention. Secondly, that an agrarian is dangerous unto the commonwealth, is affirmed upon so no slight authority, seeing Machiavel is positive that it was the dissension which happened about the agrarian that caused the destruction of Rome. Nor do I think that I did much better, that it did much better in Lacedaemon, as I shall show anon. Thirdly, that it is insufficient to keep our monarchy Thirdly, that it is insufficient to keep out monarchy cannot without impiety be denied. The holy scriptures, bearing witness that the commonwealth of Israel, notwithstanding her agrarian, submitted her neck unto the arbitrary yoke of her princes. Therefore, to come unto my fourth assertion, that it is destructive unto families, this also is so apparent that it needeth pity rather than proof. Why, alas, do you build, bind a nobility which no generation shall deny to have been the first that freely sacrificed her blood unto the ancient liberties of this people upon an unholy altar? Why are the people taught that their liberty, which except our noble ancestors had been born, must have long since been buried, cannot now be born except we be buried? A commonwealth should have the innocence of the dove. Let us leave this purchase to her birth unto the serpent, which eateth herself out of the womb of her mother. But it may be said, perhaps, that we are fallen from our first love, become proud and idle. It is certain, my lords, that the hand of God is not upon us for nothing. But take heed, how you admit of such assaults and sallies upon men's estates as may slacken a nerve of labor and give others also reason to believe that their sweat is vain. Oh, whatsoever be pretended your agrarian, which is my fourth assertion, must indeed destroy industry, for that is... For that so it did in Lacedaemon, in most is most apparent, as also that it could do no otherwise, where every man, having his forty quarters of barley with wine proportional, supplied him out of his own lot by his laborer or helot, and being confined in that unto the scantling above, which he might not live, there was not any such thing as a trade or other art save that of war and exercise. Other, wherefore, a Spartan, if he were not in arms, must sit and play with his fingers whence ensued perpetual war. And the estate of the citizen being as little capable of increase as that of the commonwealth, her inevitable ruin. Now what better ends 
you can propose unto yourselves in like ways. I do not so well see as that there may be worse for Lacedaemon. Yet was free from civil war. But if you employ your citizens no better than she did, I cannot promise you that you shall fare so well, because both they are still desirous of war, that hope it may be profitable unto them, and the strongest security you can give of peace is to make it gainful. Otherwise men will rather choose that whereby they may break your laws than that whereby your laws may break them which I do not speak so much in relation unto the nobility, or such as would be holding as to the people, or them that would be getting. The passions in these being of so much the more strength as a man's felicity is weaker in the fruition of things than in the prosecution and increase of them. Truly, my lords, it is my fear that by taking off more hands and the best from industry, you will farther in, in damage it than can be repaired by laying on a few, and the worst, while the nobility must be forced to send their sons into, unto the plough, and as if this were not enough, to marry their daughters also unto farmers. But I do not see, to come unto the last point, how it is possible that this thing should be brought about to your good, I mean, though it may unto the destruction of many. For that the agrarian of Israel, or that of Lacedaemon, might stand is no such miracle. The lands, without any consideration of the former proprietor being surveyed and cast into equal lots, which could neither be bought nor sold nor multiplied, so that they knew whereabouts to have a man. But in this nation, no such division can be introduced, the lands being already in the hands of proprietors, and such whose estates lie very rarely together, but mixed one with another, being also of tenures in nature are so different that, as there is no experience that an agrarian was ever introduced in such a case, so there is no appearance now or reason why it should. But that which is against reason and experience is impossible. The case of my lord Philautus was the most concerned in the whole nation, for he had four younger brothers, his father, just, his father being yet living, unto whom he was heir of ten thousand pounds a year, wherefore being a man both of good parts and esteem, his words brought both upon men's reasons and passions, and had borne a stroke at the head of the business, if my lord Archon had not interposed the buckler in this oration.